Welcome to part three of estimating with Excel for the small contractor. I'm Now that we've got a uh, workable estimating worksheet, let's come down here to the uh, tabs. That's what these are called at the bottom is tabs. This, the whole, the whole file is called a workbook. Each one of these tabs is called a worksheet. So these are worksheets, the whole thing the, the file as you save it is going to be called a workbook. Let's come down and rename this tab. Um, I can double click on it. I'm going to backspace. I'm going to call this estimate worksheet, EWS. Now that we've done the job, we want to be able to figure up our hours and our materials. So we track our hours and track our invoices. So we need to start with a whole new tab. I call these. T uh, the other thing you can do with these is you can right click and you can rename. And I will call the next sheet Bill Worksheet. Number two is sheet number two is my cheat sheet of some things that I used in building the first sheet. Our Bill Worksheet. First thing we're going to do is give the uh, we're going to name the sheet. So, and I'll use this in a different format later, but uh, it's going to be called Jones Job. Jones is with an S. Um, when you when you're working with Excel, see, I made a mistake here. I wanted to. I'm here in the I can't go back. Well, I guess I can't now. If you hit the back button on your keyboard, it'll generally take you from column B to column A. You come up here to make most of your changes, and then you can use back, back or forward. I'm going to leave this column open, and I do that for the purposes of using an X mark or a check mark when I go through my invoices later. First thing we're going to want to do is do a labor subtotal. And I'm going to, in this column, I'm going to stretch it out so that I've got enough room to. Uh, then we're going to do our labor markup. Then sales tax on labor in Iowa. Uh, sales tax applies to repairs but not to new construction or remodeling. For instance, if I replace one shingle, it's sales taxable. Or if I repair one shingle. If I do the whole roof, it's not taxable. Um, then we're going to have a labor subtotal. I spelled that wrong. Now I'm going to show you. Now I haven't made any. I haven't done anything with my cursor. If I use my back key, key on my keyboard, then it takes me over to that column. If I want to make changes to this, if I just start typing again, it'll redo. It'll just start typing again in there. If I come up here, I can add my T and correct it. Actually, that's a labor total. Then I'm going to do my materials. I spell total wrong again. Again, I want to make that column a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to go with uh, materials markup. materials total and then my total job cost. Okay, I'm going to go down here about 
here and now I'm going to go one more just to give myself some space to work with. I'm going to, my, this is my materials invoices. Now I probably should say uh, material supplier. number yard and then basically what I do is usually just fill in a few of these and then uh, paint store no, that's enough for now uh, in mine I usually have a hardware store paint store lumber yard things like that and in this column, we will enter our invoices. So if I get, I go through my invoices, I've got uh, $101 at, uh, for my first invoice. $200 for my next invoice. And then at the paint store, I've got a $50 charge and a $25 charge. Now most of my invoices, the taxes are figured, are paid right there at the counter, so I don't have anything in my materials for taxes. This column, we'll take it down here to 100, is all going to be in dollars. And most of my things are going to be a little bit more than that, so I'm going to need some more space to build that. And then I'm, I'm going to have a, this is the uh, invoice amount, and this will be a uh, description. I want that for fairly good size. So this was uh, lumber, and this was... Uh, rock primer and this was stain that way I can I don't in I in mine it's not important to me that I have an invoice number I just want to know what materials are bought on that ticket and if I have to go look it up later then I can Over here, I'm going to start tracking my uh, hours. I'm going to put in date. I'm going to put in uh, worker number one. And I'll show you a little trick here. I'm going to fill these. Worker number one, two, three. Today's date is uh, 119. All's I have, well, I better put the code in there first. I like to use a short date. So if I type in 119, it already knows that it's the year 2013. I'm going to fill this in and it can. When you use a date like this, it just continuously updates the next day, the next day. Um, this worker, I'm going to total the hours for this worker. So I'm going to use sum. I'll take that down to 100 or you can take it down to 20 or 30 or whatever you want. Enter. And then I use fill across. And so on uh, today, Saturday, Sunday, so on Monday, worker number one is going to get in uh, nine hours. 
Worker number two is going to get in 8.5. And worker number three is going to get in 10 hours. Okay. Uh, worker number one, uh, he's the crew, or he's the foreman. He's making 40 bucks an hour. Worker number two is making 30. And worker number three is making 20. And worker number four is for fill in people. Hours, and this is uh, rate. Here's total. And they're going to this. This cell equals $40 an hour times the number of hours. Enter. $360. Okay. I want all of these to be in dollar signs. So now I'm going to take my labor subtotal is going to be a combination or is going to be these four cells added together and you can put as many worker as many employees in, as you want to in there. I'm going to use auto sum again. And I'm going to highlight the cells I want in my uh, labor subtotal. <coughs> we are going to start marking up with uh, with percentages this cell and the sales tax. I'm going to press control and also this cell are going to have uh, percentages in them. I'm going to have a 10% uh, markup in labor. 7% is my sales tax in this area. Labor mater or materials, I'm going to put 20%. My labor markup, I'm going to press equal. My labor subtotal times my percentage. Enter. My sales tax is going to be another uh, right, let's just use subtotal, let's use auto sum again. Auto sum these two plus or no times sales tax. Enter. And my labor subtotal, auto sum, it's, it already figured out exactly what I wanted to do. Press enter. My material subtotal is going to be, I'm going to do auto sum again. And if I just use uh, colon, I don't have to do fill, I can just type it in. Enter. My materials markup is going to I press equal. My materials subtotal times my percentage there. Enter. I'm going to do auto sum. And it figured out exactly what I wanted to do. Enter. My total job cost will be labor plus materials. Enter. What did I do wrong? Probably forgot to go equals. Equals labor subtotal plus material subtotal. Enter. Here again, as I've uh, shown you before, I like to use color to identify things. I'm going to go blue for materials, green for labor, and uh, job cost is going to be whatever color, taupe is that color is. Now when I go through my, uh, I leave this column open and this column can be made a little smaller just so that I can get my percentages in there. When I go through and I 
get my statement, I might want to check things. And that's why I leave this, this column open.